I'm Douglas Cardinal, an architect from Alberta. When we Anishinaabe communicate with the Creator, we pray in the six directions, east, south, west, north, heaven, and earth. This symbolizes the forces of creation with which we connect ourselves. However, we believe that there's not only six directions of power in our universe, there is a seventh direction. This is the power of the spirit, the creator within ourselves. We are the seventh direction. Only human beings have been given the power to create. The creator may have created this magnificent planet with wondrous forms of life from which we evolved. But we human beings have the power to destroy this marvelous creation and all of life itself. That is the magnitude of our irresponsible power. Connecting to the seventh direction requires us to be respectful of all life, including our own. We can only be connected when we understand that the soft power of love is much greater than the hard power of force. When we are aligned to the Creator, we can become powerful, magical beings clothed in flesh. We truly become sorcerers because we are connected to the Source. When we embrace this awesome power, we must take full responsibility in how we exercise it. Each individual has the power and the responsibility to make a difference in the course that humanity takes. It is the creative efforts of each individual that determines the destiny of our future. As stewards of this land given to us by the Creator, we have the responsibility to respect all living things on the land we share maintain balance and harmony with our environment, create the systems which we require to be sustainable, heal ourselves, our families, our communities, and all the people that share the land with us, heal Mother Earth, the source of life on this planet. When we plan for the future generations to thrive on our territories, we must also plan for the future of all living beings that share the land with us. We must f plan for the future of our life givers, for without them, our future is in jeopardy. As an architect and planner, I carry the vision of the city of the future. I see a thriving, organic, densely populated metropolis that is a dynamic living organism. Like natural complex living organisms, it is composed of a numerous variety of living cells which are fed by veins and arteries and nerves in which the life of every cell is dependent on its nutrients. For a city, these veins and arteries are filled with people, vehicles, public and private transportation, carrying goods and supplies to every cell or space. To bring life to every part of the city, it will not be a cancerous grid-like growth like our present cities. With all the knowledge and wealth which we have never, we have never produced such dehuman, dehumanizing ugliness in our human history where the flow of people and traffic have to start and stop at every intersection of the grid. Any natural organism would die in that configuration. This is no way to nurture living cells. The new organic city would be inspired by nature and serving every cell. Each cell would be designed to serve as a functioning, beautiful environment which would serve its inhabitants and raise their spirits. This matrix of cells would grow into beautiful sculptural shapes that would be an ode to the creative gifts 
that we all have as human beings. We could, through art, the art of architecture, truly express the truly creative beings that we are. We can shape our environment, but in turn, it shapes us. This city will shape us to look towards the future with harmony with each other and with our natural environment, because this city will not take and destroy our natural environment <coughs> and pollute the water and the air which sustains us. It will not destroy the beauty of this blue planet, but it will give back a positive contribution to the earth itself. That is our Anishinaabe way. This organic city will be filled with living plants to sustain us. Urban agriculture as dense as a living rainforest, which will absorb the carbon dioxide we exhale <coughs> and balance the environment of the metropolis to bring back oxygen to the, to the planet. The water of this living organism will be more pure flowing back into the rivers than the water extracted from the land itself. The energy taken from the earth to heat and cool this organism will give back more energy to the planet than taken from the source. This organism would connect the cells together, connecting people together, and truly connect this metropolis to the planet in a harmonious, respectful, and giving way, like the beautiful living beings which this amazing planet has created. Following these lessons from observing the wondrous planet, it would be a natural, beautiful home to every living being which reaches out to all life in a celebratory way. Rather than the present cities based on a culture of exploitation, it will be a city with a culture of loving, caring, and celebrating all life on this planet. Now we have evolved the technologies to bring this vision into reality. But we must first change our mindset from a culture of exploitation to a culture that expresses our indigenous values of respect and sharing. These values are instilled in the human DNA and is how we evolved as social beings. These values are still held by our indigenous peoples, by the teaching of the elders who follow natural law. These are not teachings of the past, but these are the teachings of the future. Only through this paradigm of being can we bring into being this legacy of balance and harmony for future generations. Ahai. Uh,